Welcome to the celebration of the Day of the Covenant. My name is William, and this is Hadar and Serena, and we will be your hosts this evening. This special celebration is brought to you by the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of London. The covenant in religion is seen as a promise that God makes to humanity to send guidance periodically through special messengers, also known as manifestations of God. In the Baha'i faith, two twin manifestations of God were sent, the Bab and Baha'u'llah. In his sacred scriptures, Baha'u'llah makes clear provisions for the administration and unfoldment of divine civilization, the supreme goal for humanity promised in all religions. The day of the covenant was appointed by Abdu Baha, the son of Baha'u'llah, as a celebration of the beautiful, this beautiful gift to God or from God to mankind, the covenant. Today's celebration includes prayers, songs, and stories lovingly compiled and arranged by members of our community in London and area, and features two special guests. We hope you will stay for a Zoom social at the end of the program, and we begin with a land acknowledgement and prayers. Baha'u'llah has pronounced that the places where the mention of God is made and his praise glorified. Those places, the land, the sea, the meadow, the mountain and the valleys are blessed. The territory in which the Baha'i community of London broadcasts this evening's program has been blessed by the words, the work, worship, and prayer songs of the Ojibwe, the Haudenosaunee, the Atawandaron, and the Lenape. We acknowledge this evening that the praise of the Creator has been made and continues to be made on this land by these same peoples since time immemorial. مشتاق دیدارن و سودایان آن زلف مشبار هر دم فریادی نماید و آه و فقاری برارن و صدای 
عنایتی کنم و موهبتی طلبم توی بخشندی و مهربان و توی رحیم و رحمان و توی واحد فضل بی پایان ای خدا بند بخشنده این نفوس را ثابت اهن ما راسخ پیمان کن منجذب به نفحات تقدیس ما و متذکر به آیات توحید کن مشمول لحظات عین رحمانیت نما و مجذوب جمال نورانیت کن هر دم تاییدی جدید برش و هر نفس نفس رحمان به مشان بخش توی مختدر و توانا و توی دهنده و بخشنده و دانا O compassionate God, thanks be to thee, for thou hast awakened and made me conscious. Thou hast given me a seeing eye and favored me with a hearing ear, hast led me to thy kingdom and guided me to thy path. Thou hast shown me the right way and caused me to enter the ark of deliverance. O God, Keep me steadfast and make me firm and staunch. Protect me from violent tests and preserve and shelter me in the strongly fortified fortress of thy covenant and testament. Thou art the powerful, thou art the seeing, thou art the hearing. O thou the compassionate God, bestow upon me a heart which, like unto a glass, may be illumined with the light of thy love and confer upon me thoughts which may change this world into a rose garden through the outpourings of heavenly grace. Thou art the compassionate, the merciful. Thou art the great beneficent God. Abdul Baha.
Thank you to Nushin, Rasin, and Misag for the beautiful song. We have a video here from Jordan Bighorn, who is of Lakota heritage, hailing from Fort Peck, Asimboin Sui, and Standing Rock Sui communities. He is a co-producer of the short film, The Path Home, a short film commissioned by the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Canada, screened at an international conference on peace hosted at the Croc Institute for International Peace Studies at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. Well, good evening, friends. It's an honor to be with you uh, today and at this time where around the world, uh, Baha'is and relatives, loved ones, friends, uh, community members, visitors, perhaps for the first time, clicking on a link, you weren't sure uh, what it was all about, but here you are, are during this time observing a very uh, special period in our, in our history, uh, in the Baha'i history, and indeed uh, in acknowledgement of a human being who uh, affected so much change in the world that perhaps we won't know for quite some time to the effect at which uh, this being uh, changed things for us all. Um, of course, I'm speaking of Abdul Baha, the son of the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah, whose uh, centenary of his passing are what we are observing during these few days um, and around the world acknowledging the type of life that he led, uh, the things that he accomplished personally, but most importantly, what he represents, uh, not only for Baha'is as, as we acknowledge this faith and do our best to follow its teachings, its laws, and its call for service to one another, but uh, indeed the full history and impact of religion as we know it, as spirituality as we know it, uh, in our growing maturity as a planet, uh, working together, learning from one another, uh, blending all over the place uh, from culture, language, belief, uh, uh, ways of working, ways of doing and being, and ways of suffering together. Uh, we are on and have been on a collective path uh, ever since uh, if you believe that we, we crawled or slithered out of a pool and grew legs, et cetera, and evolved in that way, or uh, simply emerged from the forest uh, and found clothing and continued on in that way, regardless, uh, we have been on a path to where humanity has come together, uh, uh, oftentimes more violently than we would have liked, but um, many, many examples throughout history and I would look forward to many more in the future where our coming together in oneness and understanding uh, to create a type of unity that recognizes our singular race, uh, species, our, our, our common identity, the same color of blood that we share until finally that's all focused on the singular creator that we share. Um, as much as we are continuing to acknowledge the singular mother that we all share in the land uh, that is currently suffering, that we're having quite the impact on, and thinking of our relatives in BC in particular. Uh, I'm speaking to you from the middle of our country here in Winnipeg. You can see kind of behind me the picture of the prairies. Uh, it's not quite as green, and uh, a lot of white stuff is around on the ground now. It's a little bit chillier, uh, but this is also indicative of that natural cycle that we all must endure uh, for life to go along its natural process. Uh, this cold winter of closing things down for a bit and then opening up in the spring, having our harvest uh, and growth time in the summer until finally settling back down in the fall. Um, what I would like to uh, share with you this evening and to begin with a um, uh, an, an insight into spirituality of this part of the world from an elder by the name of Ernest Tutusis. Uh, it's a short clip uh, from an old uh, CBC show, I think back in the 60s. And uh, so there is some language used and the way of, of, of doing 
a news or a documentary presentation that uh, is, is a bit out of date, you might say, but the intent and the spirit and, and, and uh, the key message that I would like to draw from uh, is intact. And it's in reference to indigenous peoples of this land. But I do think uh, from a spiritual standpoint, it also represents a reflection that I'd like to draw our attention to that uh, Abdul Baha himself um, uh, not only presented in his daily life, but uh, his vast amounts of prayer, teachings and comment, answers to questions uh, and leaving us with a sense of mystery for, for us to take it further. Uh, to explore uh, the reality that we're all sharing. Ernest Tatusis is a spiritual leader of the Cree, known and respected by other Indians throughout North America. He is a direct descendant of Poundmaker, carrying on the struggle of his people. Our, uh, our story, the way the older people tell us that uh, it's very, very close to something like Adam and Eve. But it just happens that a North American Indian never disobeyed in his garden. That's why in 1492 they found us living on this land and God was taking care of everything. We let him run the business and we didn't have to work like the white man did. And he provided our food in the air, on land and in water. And all we had to do was live in harmony with, with his creation and respect God above all. And this is holy land. This is land where man has never disobeyed God. That is to, to live against nature, eh? to, to, to be building dams, to tear the land, and uh, to try and conquer nature. We never did. And this is, this, this is holy land. This water running down here, the Cut Knife Creek here, and then there's North Battle River runs down there. And the old people tell us that these are the right hand instruments and servants of God. It's the sun, the wind, and the water, and the fire. These are holy things, spiritual things. We're supposed to live with those things. When I reflect on those words from Ernest, and especially in Canada here with our history of, uh, of Christianity that has been presented in a certain way, uh, many Indigenous people, of course, had this foundational understanding of relationship and interconnectedness, not only with one another, but with our Creator and our land. And to interrupt uh, that relationship with a different understanding uh, that said that was wrong, this is right, and this is the only way, you can never do it that way, uh, we see the results from that. Um, the presence and person of Abdu Baha uh, in terms of a relationship with our creator is a unique and, and uh, powerful example of this day and age when the message of Baha'u'llah, his father, of um, calling for the oneness of mankind, that this is indeed uh, a new message and the day of God, and that how would the cycle uh, that he inaugurated continue, how would it be insured and intact? And uh, the center of that promise, so that covenant is Abdu Baha, that for the first time in religious history from that standpoint, uh, in any other example where there might be a message or a movement or an invitation, how would that cause, how would followers and loved ones uh, continue after the passing of that founder? Uh, it would be passed either th through written word or comment, or maybe a group would come together. Uh, but over time, many examples show that those things fall away over time and divisions arise. And I want to follow this person versus that. Abdul Baha was the center, is the center of the covenant of God um, and brought the Baha'i teachings uh, around the world. He traveled to the West, most notably here in Canada, in Montreal uh, in 1912 and all throughout America and spoke uh, at length around the theme of cycle and, and uh, revelation and message um, and what it means for us today. And I'd just like to read one small part from one of these answers around the theme of a universal cycle. 
When a cycle comes to a close, a new one is inaugurated, and the previous cycle, on account of the momentous events which transpire, vanishes so entirely from memory as to leave behind no record or trace. Each of the manifestations of God has likewise a cycle wherein his religion and his law are in full effect. When his cycle is ended through the advent of a new manifestation, a new cycle begins. Briefly, our claim is that a universal cycle in the world of existence comprises a vast span of time and countless ages and epochs. In such a cycle, the manifestations of God shine forth in the visible realm until a universal and supreme manifestation makes the world the focal center of divine splendors and through his revelation brings it to a stage of maturity. The duration of his cycle is very long indeed. Other manifestations will arise in the course of the cycle under his shadow and will renew, according to the needs of the time, certain laws pertaining to material affairs and transactions, but they will remain under his shadow. We are in the cycle which began with Adam and whose universal manifestation is Baha'u'llah. So with this in mind, and I think of, uh, of Ernest's words of paradise and that many historic, historians will say that, uh, that human life began in Africa and we traveled around the world over countless millennia uh, and ended up here in the West. And indeed, um, the entire planet has traveled to North America, the West. <clears throat> the West. And uh, whereas many relatives uh, are here, uh, are my, my ancestors, we do not have that, that same story. We haven't traveled uh, to China. We haven't traveled to Europe. We haven't uh, made an exodus to, to Russia, for example. But we have uh, been presently waiting for the world to arrive here. And I think there's a reason for that. And al Baha's words and his footsteps that traveled this part of the world to bring the message of his father, uh, I think, seals this cycle and binded together the East and the West and brought the idea and the life and spirit of the covenant of that promise that this message will continue. We are, we are at a point of maturity as human beings to, to not make certain mistakes or not disobey God as we once did and continued to do. Um, but this land and this environment is such that we can now uh, take his teachings and his laws and follow them accordingly. Um, I'd like to end uh, with uh, another quote from a very special being in Indigenous history. His name was Black Elk. Uh, you may have heard of the book Black Elk Speaks, which, which was um, recorded and written uh, around the time that uh, uh, Black Elk was recounting his early life as a medicine person. And at nine years old, he had a vision, a great vision, which was quite detailed quite extraordinary um, and it's no coincidence to me that the time that he was unconscious for some 11 days was in uh, the spring of 1863 and at which time in Adrianople Baha'u'llah was writing down in Revelation um, the Kitabi Akhtas, the book, the most holy book the new Jerusalem that would come out of the heavens, as it were, uh, the new world order, the charter for the world order for, for, for all of us was coming down uh, out of the invisible realm into written word. And at this time, uh, Black Elk was witnessing something. And this is what he wrote. Then the voice said, behold this day for it is yours to make. Now you shall stand upon the center of the earth to see, for, for they are taking you. I was still on my bay horse, and once more I felt the riders of the west, the north, the east, the south, behind me in formation as before, and we were going east. I looked ahead and saw the mountains there with rocks and forests on them, and from the mountains flashed all colors upwards to the heavens. Then I was standing on the highest mountain of, of them all, and round about beneath me was the whole hoop of the world. 
And while I stood there, I saw more than I can tell and understood more than I saw. For I was seeing in a sacred manner the shapes of all things in the spirit and the shape of all shapes as they must live together like one being. And I saw that the sacred hoop of my people was one of many hoops that made one circle wide as daylight and as starlight. And in the center grew one mighty flowering tree to shelter all the children of one mother and one father. And I saw that it was holy. Then as I stood there, two men were coming from the east head first like arrows flying, and between them rose the daybreak star. They came and gave an herb to me and said, with this on earth you shall undertake anything and do it. It was the daybreak star herb, the herb of understanding. And they told me to drop it on the earth. I saw it falling far, and when it struck the earth, it rooted and grew and flowered, four blossoms on one stem, a blue, a white, a scarlet, and a yellow, and the rays from these streamed upwards to the heavens so that all creatures saw it, and in no place was there darkness. Friends, I wish I could be with you live. I wish you all the best for the rest of the evening, and what a special time to join together uh, to focus on such a being that was the mystery of God, who dedicated his life to his father, to service of his father, but led the way for us to follow in his footsteps to serve our creator. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan, for your account of the cycle of the Baha'i faith for this day, its connection to the indigenous peoples of the world, Elder Ernest, Black Elk, and our planet's environment. Moving along the path, Louise Profe Leblanc, Say Itzo is an internationally renowned traditional storyteller from the Nacho Nyak Dun First, First Nation of Mayo Yukon. She has served on several institutions for the Baha'i faith, including the National Spiritual Assembly of Canada. For well over 40 years, she has been committed to the cultural and artistic heritage of Indigenous artists of Canada, and since retiring her position as Indigenous Arts Coordinator for the Canada Council for the Arts, is now developing her own practice of storytelling, textile arts, writing, and poetry. She realizes that art is a door for which people can come together to better understand and appreciate each other in the spirit of unity. After many years as a storyteller, she realized that stories have the power to teach, to educate, but most of all the power to heal and to bring listeners to a higher level of spiritual awareness of our own human nature and how we should agree uh, how we should aspire to treat one another by upholding the traditional teaching that we are one people. And now Louise Profella Blanc has a story to tell us. Unmute myself. Okay. Oh, that's been such a powerful introduction. I really want to thank all of you who have masterfully pulled this lovely evening together to honor the master, the center of the covenant, the great mystery of God, um, our exemplar, our protector. And so um, I would like to, first of all, open with a prayer in my language, if you don't mind. Um, as you're all aware, you know, there's many mysteries uh, that have come together since the most recent revelation has come to this earth. And one of the mysteries, which I think is such a beautiful uh, element of this connection of the covenant, the covenant between the Bob, between Baha'u'llah and the Bob, between Baha'u'llah and his eldest son. And the covenant continues through Shoghi Effendi the guardian of the Baha'i faith. And then of course, uh, with the universal house of justice and these powerhouses have all lined up. And today we are honoring, we are honoring this strength that comes from 
the creator who comes from God. And I was always mystified that to find that on the evening of the declaration of the blessed beauty, the Bob, Abdul Baha was being born. His mother, Nawab, the wife, Baha'u'llah, was giving birth to this great mystery. It was always astounding to me, that particular story. So I'd like to offer this prayer in my language. It's from the Bob. It's for the remover of difficulties. <clears throat> and I'd like to offer this as a special prayer this evening for the remover of any difficulties that we might have um, as obstacles in our way to really commemorate, to give our thanks to Abdul Baha for all that he has done for humanity, for all that he has done for the future of the world in all aspects of life. So this is the prayer. Ayera cho taurangiyaju sohothan gwensothan and yaihohutsi the janik niyo taurangi oyashlanagi agetka Dawani kitu odanani sothan. So perhaps I'll just give you a little bit of um, background of this slide presentation that uh, my husband is going to be helping me to present to all of you this evening. And it's in celebration of this special day and to honor our blessed master, Abdul Baha, and his exhortation to the indigenous people of North America. And sometimes I consider this, there must have been a profound coming together of all our ancestors, all the Native American ancestors with this beautiful man as he stepped ashore on this continent, which we refer to as Turtle Island. I'm sure he must have had communication with Black Elk, with Sitting Bull, with all of these wonderful visionaries as he was. So maybe we can um, show the first slide, please, Bob. So friends, in early this spring, our area teaching committee uh, encouraged the friends of this region to do something for the commemoration of, of this year, the centenary of the passing of Abdul Baha, 100 years since this precious man, uh, the eldest son of Baha'u'llah left this earth. And so with this presentation, you, you, see, you see his um, hand raised, he's, He's welcoming the people. He said, if you desire with all your heart friendship with every race on earth, your thoughts, spiritual and positive, will spread. It will become the desire of others growing stronger and stronger until it reaches the minds of all men. So I was uh, struck by this challenge of our area teaching committee. And what came to mind is the flowers of one garden. And as an artist uh, who does beadwork, which is a traditional art form of many indigenous people, I saw these flowers being beaded and to celebrate Abdul Baha. If you can go to the next slide, please. I'm going to um, just ask people to come. I, I can't see everybody on the screen, but perhaps somebody will just come forward that is, is one of the hosts, William and your, and your son and your daughter, perhaps you can help me. But as you see here, this is a beautiful beaded flower. And 
the, the, the dream that I had or the vision that I had was to um, decorate an Abba for Abdu Baha as a gift for this year to honor him, to thank him, and to give praise for, for all that he's done for the world. And so I sent out invitations to many people. And as Jordan spoke about, you know, this oneness of all of humanity, I asked people of all races, if they would kindly sow a flower in his honor, so I could attach it to this Abba. So maybe um, one of the three of you that are on the screen on the right hand side there, William and your daughter and your son, if you can, one of you read this beautiful quote from Baha'u'llah. Through his potency, the trees of divine revelation have yielded their fruits, every one of which hath been sent down in the form of a prophet, bearing a message to God's creatures in each of the worlds whose numbers God alone in all his encompassing knowledge can reckon. So the first flower that came in to my possession when I sent out the call, this was actually created by an elderly woman who has Parkinson's. And she sent it, she said it took her two months to sew this, but it was an honor for her to be able to uh, have her one of her flowers uh, added onto the upper. So we'll go to the next one, please. Could somebody else read this beautiful quote from Abdul Baha? Oh, ye lovers of God, make firm your steps, fulfill your pledge to one another. Go forth in harmony to scatter abroad the sweet savors of God's love and to establish his teachings until ye breathe a soul into the dead body of this world and bring true healing in the physical and spiritual realms to everyone who alive. I was thrilled when I had the second flower come in and my, my mother who lives in the Yukon, who is a friend of the Baha'i Faith, when I told her about this project and she said, oh, is that Baha'u'llah's oldest son? I said, yes. And this is the flower that she sent. The next one, please, Bob. So friends, these are not all of them, but these are several of the flowers that continuously came in. And I, I think that the post office was even as excited as I was when I went to pick these up. And so they represent the indigenous people of Canada and many that were sent in from the United States and uh, the Chinese uh, representation as well. Many uh, non-indigenous people sent in their flowers. I think all total, there was uh, 49 flowers. And I was saddened because uh, two beautiful black people said that they would make flowers. And one of them was a man. He said, as a young boy in Africa, he used to have to bead. And unfortunately, I think he became so uh, preoccupied with his work that he forgot. And, and um, if you see the flower at the very top on the left, uh, this flower was made by a woman from the United States, uh, from North Dakota. And she befriended me and I found out that, you know, I was, I was wanting all the four races to be represented on this beautiful cloak of Abdul Baha. And I discovered that she was Lakota and black. So that, that just lifted my spirits. And I thought, I think Abdul Baha would be very happy about that. So who would like to read this 
Next quote, please. The more this compact is reinforced, the happier and the better shall all things be, for it will draw unto itself the confirmations of God. If the lovers of the Lord are hoping for grace to win as their friends the company on high, they must do all they can to strengthen this compact. For such alliance, for brotherhood and unity, is even as watering the tree of life. It is life everlasting. Yes, indeed. The next one, please, Bob. <clears throat> There's a beautiful quick story about these three um, beadwork, the, the three flowers that you see here. In Canada, we have received uh, many Syrians to this part of the world. And we have been invited to their home. They have such, they're such hospitable people. And when they found out that we were Baha'is, they told us a beautiful story. They said, your holy man lived in our mountains. And I, I, I was so touched by that. So when I asked them if they would consider sowing some flowers for this special year for the robe of Abdul Baha, they said, of course. So these are representative of the beautiful Syrian people. So somebody wants to read this lovely quote uh, as well from Abdul Baha. The first remedy of all is to guide the people aright so that they will turn themselves unto God and listen to his counselings and go forth with hearing ears and seeing eyes. Once the speedily effect, effective drought is given them, then in accordance with the teachings, they must be led to acquire the characteristics and the behavior of the concourse on high and encouraged to seek out all the bounties of the Abhal realm. They must cleanse their hearts from even the slightest trace of hatred and spite, and they must set about being truthful and honest, consolatory and loving to all humankind so that the East and West will even as two lovers hold each other close, that hatred and hostility will perish from the earth and universal peace be firmly rooted in their place. Abdul Baha. Next one, please. So, as I said, I, I, I just felt that perhaps the canvas uh, for these flowers would be the Abba. And I, I'm always thinking about what does this mean? That we would cloak ourselves in this robe of love and this robe of tenderness and care from Abdul Baha. So he tells us here, he said, Oh, ye lovers of God, do not dwell on what is coming to pass in this holy place. And be ye in no wise alarmed. Whatsoever may happen is for the best, because affliction is but the essence of bounty, and sorrow and toil are mercy unalloyed, and anguish is peace of mind. And to make a sacrifice is to receive a gift. And whatsoever may come to pass hath issued from God's grace. See, therefore, to your own tasks. Guide ye the people. Educate them in the ways of Abdul Baha. Deliver to mankind this joyous message from the Abha realm. He tells us, rest not. By day and night, seek ye no moment's peace. Strive ye with all your might to bring to men's ears these happy tidings 
In your love for God and your attachment to Abdu'l Baha, accept ye every tribulation, every sorrow, endure the aggressor's taunts, put up with the enemy's reproaches, follow in the footsteps of Abdu'l Baha and in the pathway of the Abha beauty. Long at every moment to give up your lives. Shine out like the day star. Be unresting as the sea, even as the clouds of heaven. Shed ye life upon the field and hill, and like unto April winds, blow freshness through those human trees and bring them to their blossoming. So, these are some of the exhortations and what I felt strongly is that these flowers uh, that ornament this Abba are a form of thank you uh, to Abdul Baha. And um, the first person who was going to make the Abha for me, unfortunately, she was cleaning the snow off her roof and she fell. And she broke her ribs and her heel. So I had to quickly see if I can find another wonderful seamstress in the community and a beautiful lady who's of Jewish heritage, who's now a Baha'i, Natalie Thurlwall, made this wonderful Abba for, for us to put the flowers on. Okay, the next one, please. So this is the back. Bob, would you kindly read this for us? O thou who art enamored of the covenant, the blessed beauty hath promised this servant that souls would be raised up who would be the very embodiments of guidance and banners of the concourse on high torches of God's oneness and stars of his pure truth shining in the heavens where God reigneth alone. They would give sight to the blind, would make the deaf to hear, they would raise the dead to life, they would confront all the peoples of the earth, pleading their cause with proofs of the Lord of the seven spheres. It is my hope that in his bounty he will soon raise up these souls that his cause may be exalted. The lodestone which will attract this grace is staunchness in the covenant. Render thou thanks unto God that thou art firmest of the firm. O oh my God, aid thou thy servant to raise up the word and to refute what is vain and false, to establish the truth, to spread the sacred verses abroad, reveal the splendors, and make the morning's light to dawn in the hearts of the righteous. Thou art verily the generous, the forgiving. Thank you, Bob. Next one, please. Could somebody Please read this wonderful quote from Abdu'l Baha telling us how to be as beings. O ye lovers of God, be kind to all peoples, care for every person, do all ye can to purify the hearts and minds of men. Strive ye to gladden every soul, to every meadow be a shower of grace, to every tree, the water of life, be as a sweet musk to the sense of humankind, and the, to the alien be a fresh restoring breeze. Be pleasing waters to all those who thirst, a careful guide to all who have lost their way. Be father and mother to the orphan, be loving sons and daughters to the old, be an abundant treasure to the poor. Think ye of love and good fellowship as the delights of heaven, think ye of hostility and hatred as the torments of hell. Thank you. Next one, please. 
William, would you please read this one? Thank you. May you become as the waves of one sea, the stars of the same heaven, fruits adorning the same tree, roses of one garden, in order that through you, the oneness of humanity may establish its temple in the world of mankind. For you are the ones who are called to uplift the cause of unity among the nations of the earth. Dul Baha. Next one, please, Bob. And if I can have your daughter, William, read the last post. Can you see it okay? Um, and now I give you a commandment that shall be for a covenant between you and me, that ye have faith, that your faith be steadfast as a rock, that no earthy storms can move, that nothing can disturb, and that it endure through all things even to the end. As ye have faith, so shall your powers and blessings be. This is the balance. This is the balance. This is the balance. So friends, that's, that's the gift that has come from this part of the world and all across Canada in some parts of the United States, and of course from the friends from Syria. And this uh, particular ABBA is uh, still, on dis still on display at the Green Acre Baha'i Learning Center. And there's uh, more stories about how it got down there and how it was protected at the border. And the, it, there's many stories about this wonderful opportunity for the man who is taking it there to be able to teach the Baha'i faith. Because of these art pieces going to Green Acre. So thank you very much. I'm so happy to spend this evening with you on this special day of the covenant. And uh, I'm also very proud of the fact that your community honors this special day for 24 hours, which is the length of the day. Start in the day as the day ends, which is at sunset until the following day at sunset. I admire that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Louise Coffey LeBlanc for the beautiful story, flower art and Abba inspired by the life of Abdul Baha. Next, we have Carmel with a song.
Thank you, Carmel, for the beautiful song. We'll close with the Tablet of Visitation, a prayer by Abdul Baha.
Thank you everyone for coming. We are now gonna have uh, smaller groups and you're welcome to stay and join these groups and socialize.